Hey everyone, this is part two for the vStitcher to Blender workflow videos. In part one, I covered the garment export settings from vStitcher and fixing some of your textures in Blender. And in this video, I'm going to show you some free resources for lighting, materials, and 3D objects that you can use in your 3D scene in Blender. If you've been doing some of your own research, you've probably already come across some of these, but if you haven't, then they can be game changing for you. So let's jump into it. The first one that I want to show you guys is one that I use a lot and I'm really excited about it. It's an add-on for Blender called Blender Kit. The download and install process is super easy. They even show you how to do it on their website. So I'm just going to download the zip file. You don't need to unzip it. Go to your preferences and your add-ons and install it from your downloads folder and then make sure you check it off to keep it active. And with that, you get access to free models, materials, scenes, HDRs, brushes. I've only really used it for materials and maybe some models. You, with the free option, you have a limited selection, but you can upgrade. So I can select my um, object and apply any of the materials that I search with the keyword search. So for this one, maybe I want to look for like a hologram material and test a few out. So this one is kind of cool. I want to keep it. And then I can go and edit even the avatar material. So the skin I can update to a hologram material as well. I think this one looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and update her eyes and her eyelashes and her hair as well. So from the drop down, you can just select it. One thing to keep in mind is if you are testing out some materials, they are going to get stored in your file. So make sure you purge the um, material so you're, you know, they're not stored in there. And in your shader editor, you can see all the nodes set up for that material and go ahead and update um, whatever you want from it. Like I can update the colors of these easily. And the second one I want to show you guys is if you Google free 3D models, you have a few options. So I usually use Turbo Squid or CG Trader and you can just search free and then the keyword for whatever you're looking for. So for example, if I search free heart, you see a bunch of free um, objects or FBX files available to you. So if I download this one, I'm just making sure it's the file format that I can work with. So I usually look for OBJs or FBX, but as you know, Blender accepts a few different formats. So I'm going to download the object and then the material file if I want to use the material that the artist set up for it and then just import it. So depending on the material they've set up, um, you might not be able to see it in the viewport, so you can go to the solid view and then you'll be able to see it. It's probably huge, so you can scale it down however you like and position it where you need it to be. So that material, I'm going to get rid of it and set up a new one. Maybe I'll do a glass material in that pink color. I might change this later on, but I just want to use something for now.
And then I want to show you a free HDRI resource and the one that I use more often is Polyhaven and I refer to these white spheres for the type of light that I'm looking for. And then you just download the HDRI, you go to the shader editor and you go to the world view and look up the environment texture node, delete the other background one and look up your HDRI file. And you can usually see the image with the HDRI, but you can go and make that transparent in your settings. I'm going to get rid of the HDRI. I'm just going to add a background color for now. And HDRIs are great if you're trying to light up your whole scene um, equally, but for if usually I like to just manually set my lighting up with um, the different lighting options that I have within Blender instead of bringing in an HDRI. So that light is pretty strong, and I can I'm gonna bring it down. I usually like setting up my own lighting because I like um, there to be a lot of shadows on one side and the lighting to come from one direction. And you can set up your render settings. If you're going to use emission, make sure to check off bloom, screen space reflections. and just test out as many possibilities as you want before you finalize a render. So if I wanted to go and make this smoother, I can add the subdivision modifier. And then scale up the object so you you don't have to stick with whatever object you've you know, import it and you can edit it as well. So I'm going to add a different material for it, an emission shader. Give it that nice glow. Crank up the strength of it. Maybe add a little of that pink color. And then I can render my final image. And that's the end of part two for the V-Stitcher to Blender workflow videos. I've been spending a lot of time learning how to do various things in Blender that relate to my own work. So I do plan on creating more videos that will be shorter and that may cover some interesting random things that you may want to play around with as well. So keep an eye out for those and see you guys next time.